Welcome to another episode of NeverEndingPanel.com. You're not. You sure you don't want to say number two? Why should I say number two? We're not saying number two because they're all individual. I agree, but you always insist on giving these things. So I wasn't going there. Go, go, go. You're you're robbing the joy of this. I like getting yes, into arguments with them. But there has to be at least thirty seconds of argument, Arlene. Robbing joy. Uh, <laughs> robbing joy. That's your new that's joy your robber nickname. Robbing joy. Joy robber. Tonight's tap. Tonight's topic is uh, what does it take to develop artists with unique talent? And mm -hmm. so we are here with Danny Dixon, who is the president and creative director of Tumble Creek Press. And you do specifically manga, cartoon, mm. things like that. So how do you develop an artist? Do you, someone comes in and shows you something beautiful, but no ideas maybe. Do you say, we're going to use that person, or I got an idea for them? or? Um, for me, as you know, both creative director and, and um, uh, publisher, um, I'm looking for a number of things. And, I, and I'm, pr I'm primarily looking for artists, um, uh, in, as in illustrators, pencilers, inkers, colorists. Um, letterers to a degree because there is an art to lettering I found out when I try to do it myself um, <laughs> that there's no software program for that yeah, yeah. <laughs> well no there is but I, there's an art to placement there's an art Got to um, how the words lead you across the page um, it's not just put the bubble above someone's head Got it. Um, it's not as simple as that um, and what I look for in artists is someone who a loves it because some people are thinking that it's it's the quick fix somehow. I don't know why, but you know you want to do away with those people. Um, what does that mean, the quick fix? Well, I think people think that, that if they if they that this is a a, a fast road, the speed, the the on way to um, fame and fortune, and 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 you should be doing comic books as an artist because you love to draw you and um and above loving to draw you love to tell stories because ultimately i've seen so many people who have these um what would amount to splash pages right. or they're like oh i did this uh, this was a speed drawing assignment and i was like <laughs> okay right. well you drew that in an hour that's great because at the end of the day one pose of batman or whoever it was you thought was awesome is one panel and there's like anywhere from five to nine panels on a page. So multiply that by nine, and then you've gotten one page done. So that, that that's nothing to do with pacing and who you're um, spotlighting. So being able to tell a story um, and 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 working with them. I mean, I've worked with is artists. Is the artist storyboard the entire comic book, or is that something you have to help them with? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I they usually thumbnail, especially with thirteen, because thirteen scripts are. Um, a really, they're they're pretty much scripts, you know, like a television right. script. Thirteen is your the comic book about uh, the the the, the teenage, uh, kids get a superpower for one year at the age of thirteen. Right. From Tumblr Press. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and so um, those scripts are very detailed. The uh, the characters themselves, I I cast a bunch of kids so that they look consistent no matter who the artist is. So there's a cast, so they have to refer to those photo references. So they have to be able to as artists have to have the background whether that's a fine art background or whatever be able to replicate those kids not just make them look like whatever each 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 episode i mean each issue um but they basically have to be able to tell a story so um that's that's something i work with and they have to thumbnail out the entire book because i've had people go way over and um and so being able to pace being able to figure out who's the most important uh character in each scene and then and then there's just the cool factor. Like, ultimately, these are supposed to be fun. So you need to know, okay, if there's something that just blew up and then someone goes to read a book, don't spend seven panels on the guy Got reading it. the book. <laughs> you know, spend Beautiful, it on yeah. the so thing I see, that blew so up. So essentially what you're saying, and it's not enough to have talent. You have to be passionate about it because there's going to be a heck of a lot of work that has yes. to be done in terms of getting the story done, working with you, yes. working with a, uh, the kids, working with a whole bunch of people. Yeah. So they can't just come in with a nice book. And by the yeah. way, I noticed some pictures of kids signing autographs yeah. of their pictures. Yeah. Do you actually utilize the live kids in events and things like that yeah. as part of the, the comic series? They have. I, you know, originally they were just supposed to be photo references. And, um, you know, we did Comic-Con. The first time we did Comic-Con a couple years ago, we did a guerrilla style. We didn't have a booth. And they're like, oh, we want to come. And then they sort of came. And then they started coming to more conventions. And then people started expecting. And then we did signings. Then the retail you know, owners would be like, so are the kids coming? And then I was <laughs> like, yeah, they're coming. You know, And it became this thing. And so now people know who those kids are. 
as well as they know the actual characters that they're portraying. And so, yeah, there are a whole line of posters that have the kid and the their character and all that stuff. Fantastic. So. Uh, have you ever had to, uh, I call it a Hal Roach. Hal Roach is famous uh, for many, many things. He was the comedy director from the 1920s and 30s. Mm-hmm. And he was the oh, guy who course. looked at... He was a guy who looked at this one comedian that wasn't going anywhere named Stan Laurel and another mm-hmm. comedian named mm-hmm. Laurel Hardy. Right. And he realized that if he put them together, right. he would actually have something really good. Reese's peanut yeah. butter. Essentially. Cups. So yeah. have you ever had... Have you ever had, And the same thing, I mentioned that because Donnie and I essentially are two halves of an author. Right. By ourselves, utterly useless. So together we've actually got some books out there and we've done some things. Right. Have you ever had to do that just to find two people that... Well, yeah, I mean, you do that. I mean, you do that all the time with a pencil or an inker. You know, there's some people that will pull out. You know, the pencilers that have these great ideas, and there's and it's all it's all over the place. Um, and you know, they'll they'll create these amazing scenes. But then you go in the actual line art. You need the inker to just literally pull up the lines that will make it cohesive. Um, and then um, the same can be for colorists who knows how to bring the emotion to a scene that might look flat but the you know the the illustrator had a, a theme they were taking you on a journey so that's definitely the the the, the case um often okay so uh, it turns out you end up you, you start as a writer you end up being a mentor of artists yeah um, well you sort of have to i mean yeah. otherwise um you can't um you can't tell a, an effective story in this medium so okay thank you for being with us on this panel um we now move to our awkward pause 